uh, got a time problem. Uh, if not, I am glad to uh, join uh, their comments on the Women's History Museum and in full support of it. I just told them I would be excited about being a co-sponsor on their legislation. So thank you for giving me that opportunity. Mr. Chairman, and let me say you've been a great chairman and a great leader and a great uh, uh, bipartisan uh, uh, productive member of the House of Representatives. So I'm very pleased that uh, you have the opportunity to chair this, uh, this meeting, and I'm pleased to have the opportunity to testify. Uh, I'm proud to be working across the aisle with my friend, Representative Frank Wolf, uh, with whom I've served for 30, all 33 years that I've been in the Congress of the United States, uh, to interest, introduce this legislation which has overwhelming bipartisan support, which supports the building of the National Law Enforcement Museum in Judiciary Square. It's an important way Congress keeps faith with, with the men and women who protect our communities in law enforcement. The brave men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice to keep our neighborhoods and communities safe deserve and are being honored and remembered in our nation's capital. That's why in 2000, Congress took an important step passing the National Law Enforcement Museum Act to authorize the construction of a museum to honor and tell the story of the nearly 20,000 local, state, and federal officers who have been killed in the line of duty uh, during the course of this country's history. Since the first recorded law enforcement death in 1791, those who put their lives on the line for our communities have demonstrated the meaning of service and sacrifice. Today, 20,000 of our fallen officers are recognized and remembered at the National Law Enforcement Memorial Ceremony here in Washington each May. But Mr. Chairman, this is not enough, which is why we passed a law in 2000 authorizing the building of a museum and extending that authorization in 2010 so that many visitors can learn about the stories of our fallen heroes. The legislation Representative Wolf and I have introduced on this, this Congress would extend the authorization through 2016 so that the work and construction may be completed. After many years of hard work to get the necessary building permits, receive design approvals, and secure outside funding, the National Law Enforcement Officers Museum is ready to begin construction. Now, in many respects, many of us have been involved, but we've had a leader, an extraordinary American in his own right, someone who served here in the Congress of the United States on the staff of and leader of the staff of Congressman uh, Biagi, who himself was a New York City police officer uh, of distinction. And I want to recognize Craig, Craig Floyd, who will be testifying in just a few minutes, Mr. Chairman, in the second panel. He is Chairman and CEO of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. He has been tireless and extraordinarily effective in putting forward this effort to honor our law enforcement officers. He'll be speaking on the next panel for, uh, for his efforts and his testimony here today, which will provide more information about the fund's plans and readiness for construction. Craig has been, as I said, the driving force behind the effort to build the museum as a lasting memorial and a place of learning to benefit generations to come and highlight the service of our men and women in blue. He was a legislative assistant to the former representative Mario Bajaji, as I said, uh, and so knows our institution and has used his skill uh, to further this effort to the time where now we have every May an extraordinary candlelight uh, ceremony in which we add, unfortunately and tragically, those who have been killed during the last year in the line of duty. And as Craig says, it is not how they died that is so significant, but how they lived and what they did for all of us. I ask the subcommittee to support H.R. 4120 and join in sending a strong message to America's law enforcement officers that the sacrifice of their fallen comrades will never never be forgotten. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Hoyer. I do appreciate that. Um, going uh, party-wise, Marsha Blackburn next, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank you for the hearing, and I the really do on. appreciate all of the effort that has gone into, yes, the mic is on, gone into making this hearing a possibility today. And uh, I hope that we will have a wonderful informed discussion today about how we go about making a museum, a privately funded museum, a reality to honor our nation's most influential 
women. I have been so pleased to work with Ms. Maloney on H.R. 863. And this would look at the a commission to study the feasibility of such a museum. And she and Senator Susan Collins have truly worked for several Congresses to make this a reality. And I think it's important to remember as we take up the issue that women's suffrage started in New York and it ended the movement ended in Tennessee with uh, the ratification of the 19th Amendment, and of course that was in 1920. So Ms. Maloney and I think it is appropriate that we are working to see this museum take place. As we discuss a potential museum to honor women's history, we remember those women who went before us, women who persevered and changed the course of history. And it is on their shoulders that we stand. Women like Deborah Sampson, who disguised herself as a man so that she could fight alongside men in the Revolutionary War. Women like Susan